Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol in Microtik. Microtik Router OS is capable of running bridge interfaces with Spanning Tree Protocol or Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol support in order to create a loop-free and Layer 2 redundant environment. In this topology, we are going to verify the Spanning Tree Protocol support in our Microtik 1 and Microtik 2 device. We will need a bridge to be created on our MT1 and MT2, so they will be identical. A single bridge with Ether3 and Ether4 that is a port member for that bridge. So here we are in our MT1, so system identity, this is MT1. So we go to bridge menu, we go to bridge tab and let's create a bridge for this. So let's name it bridge for MT1. Okay, so we will accept the default settings, so we will just name the bridge. So immediately after the bridge is created, you would see on the protocol column, if we could expand this, the protocol mode, you would see that RSTP is already there. So meaning to say by default, it's already turned on. Let's add the ports first and we'll investigate later the RSTP. So let's go to ports tab. Let's add Ether3 on our newly created bridge. So click apply, click OK. Ether 4 on our newly created bridge. We go over first to our MT2, so system identity. So this is MT number 2. So we go to bridge, similar as with our MT1. So there is no bridge created. Take note under protocol mode area. Once we create the bridge, a plus sign. So let's name it as bridge MT2. Accept the default settings for now. Click OK and you'll notice the protocol mode is RSTP or Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol. Click the ports plus sign and add ports Ether3 and let's add Ether4 as well. Apply and OK. So I have my two Microtik side by side so on the left is MT1 on the right is MT2 and we are still under the bridge menu ports tab as well as on MT2 bridge menu ports tab so you will notice basically identical we have the interfaces ether3 and ether4 of course the bridge name is different to identify that this is a bridge for MT1 and this is MT2 this is not necessary just for clarity purposes the default priority and path cost is the same, 80 and 10. Take note in Microtik, it's hex. And you have the roll column and the MT1, the two ports or the two interfaces are designated port. However, if you go to MT2, the roll column, okay, you will notice that it is not the same as MT1. So rather it's root port in alternate port. So there is no designated port for Ether3 and Ether4 in MT2. So you might wonder why is that so and why the port roles are different wherein the creation of the bridge port are basically the same, adding Ether3 and Ether4. Because once the bridge is created, the RSTP or the Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol kicks in and as the other bridge is also created and also the RSTP support kicks in or is enabled, it actually performs what we call an election process. So the bridge or the switch sends what we call a special frame and that is called BPDU or Bridge Protocol data unit in a very high level this bpdu okay contains some more information but on a very high level it contains the bridge mac address and the bridge priority 
okay so in case you're looking for with this priority this is not the bridge priority but the interface or the port priority so the bridge mac address and the priority can be found under the bridge menu you go to the bridge so you'll notice if you scroll to the right you'll already see the mac address of this bridge if you double click and enter you will see the same the mac address and you go to the stp and you'll notice the priority so this is 8000 hex if i do the same on mt2 i go to bridge of course you scroll to the right you have the mac address you double click you have the mac address and you'll have the stp as well 8000 hex so you might also wonder before we move forward why is there an election process so the router or microtech router os should elect a root bridge or actually any network operating system that is supporting spanning tree protocol and its evolutions will elect what we call a root bridge so a root bridge or a root switch for that matter is in simplest term is like the master switch and basically is the top of the spanning tree on or an inverted tree if you can imagine so it will be on top and it serve as the reference point for the the spanning tree and you'll have its port as forwarding or operational or is it active and the other bridge or bridges or switches for that matter that is not elected as a root bridge so they won't be on top of the inverted spanning tree and one of their ports will not be forwarding and therefore meaning to say it is connecting or referencing to the root bridge and not by themselves as one of their ports is not in a forwarding state so in router os and any network operating system for that matter so the election goes with in a particular order wherein the bridge priority is taken into consideration first whoever has the lowest bridge priority wins so in the case of our microtech it has a default 8000 hex so therefore the two bridges will be identical on this so therefore a tiebreaker would be needed so priority is equal meaning to say there is no elected root bridge yet at this stage so the next consideration after the bridge priority will be the lowest bridge mac address so the value we have already seen it a while ago so we have to go back to general on our mt1 and mt2 and you'll see the mac address value for our bridge so we have our mac address for mt1 0c a4 23 20 for our mt2 0c d4 4c d2 it won't take you long to determine who or which of the bridge or the microtech has a lower mac address if you compare the two bridges so in our topology we have a very simple one we have two bridges or switches connected it could be complex as with a lot of switches but for basic demonstration we have two so we have only two bridges to compare so it won't take you long to determine who has the lower mac address and if you will carefully investigate we are they are the same on 0c 0c but this one the mt1 has an a4 against d4 so this will be lower than mt2 so a quick look back stp bridge priority is equal they are tied but therefore because of mac address lower than the mt2 bridge mac address so therefore the mt1 if you go to the status you will see that it is the root bridge with a check so this is not a writable value wherein you can click to check or uncheck this is read only value so if you go to status on mt2 its root bridge is not checked 
so this one is checked therefore this is a root bridge so you could determine the bridge if it is a root bridge okay if you don't want to see really or to be bothered who is the prior what is the priority for this what is the mac address for this you just simply go to status and determine okay so there is a checkbox so this is the root bridge another important thing to take note that in the root bridge you don't have any root port so again if you are a root bridge you don't have any root port so you'll have designated port so as you can see we have two designated ports so if you are a root bridge your ports are designated ports all your ports are designated ports now if the switch is a non root bridge so there is no check here so this bridge will have a root port so this is the one determined by the rapid spanning tree protocol to be the port going to the root bridge so it uses ether3 so this bridge on mt2 uses ether3 going to the root bridge so remember it has two connections ether3 and ether4 so the non-root bridge on mt2 uses ether3 it has no designated port zero so meaning to say the other interface or the other port which is ether4 becomes what we call an alternate port so on the root bridge designated port will be in forwarding state on the non-root bridge the root port will be on forwarding state as well however the alternate port will not be again will not be forwarding so essentially we have two connections from bridge of mt1 to bridge of mt2 but actually only the ether3 part is in like what you call working state or forwarding state as on the other side is ether3 forwarding the other side is ether3 forwarding and the other side ether4 is forwarding the other side the ether4 is alternate so it's not forwarding on the side of bridge on mt2 so therefore essentially we have only one active connection working for our topology so again that's the reason why the port rolls for mt1 and the port roll for mt2 are different so two designated ports because this is the root bridge we have root port this is used by mt2 to go to mt1 bridge and the ether4 is alternate port it's a standby just in case the ether3 fails or the active connection fails the alternate port will kick in so this is forwarding this is not yet forwarding let me do a quick demo so take a look ether3 is the root port ether4 is the alternate port so let's see if ether4 will kick in as the root port once i disable or temporarily suspend this link so i'm suspending ether3 to ether3 connection on mt1 to mt2 so i suspend and as you could see you have now from alternate port it changes to root port so on our mt1 bridge it is also designated so no changes this bridge remains the root bridge so it does not change because the priority and the mac address does not change so only the port rows change so on the side of mt2 wherein ether3 was now disabled so ether4 kicks in as the root port and for mt1 it's still designated and ether3 was disabled so if we put back that again so we remove the suspended or we resume the connection so let's take a look so root port ether3 and ether4 comes back as alternate ether3 and ether4 on mt1 comes back as designated 